Republican Senator Chuck Grassley is a member of the Senate Budget Committee and a member of the Senate Taiwan Caucus. Uh, important day to have you here, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, the U.S., is, as we are reporting and to continue to report, has taken out this major al-Qaeda leader 21 years after 9-11. How significant is this, sir? Very, very significant from two standpoints. One, it will slow down the al-Qaeda, not very much, but it will slow it down a little bit. Secondly, it, uh, you just heard what President Biden said a year ago uh, and how wrong the president was. And now with this killing, we know not only President Biden was wrong a year ago, but he, uh, we also know that Taliban is not keeping their word that uh, they're not going to be a safe haven for al-Qaeda. Uh, with his killing, we know that they're a safe haven for al-Qaeda. Uh, I want to move on now to the, this very important visit that is happening on the ground in Taiwan. Nancy Pelosi landing there just a short time ago. I'm sure you have been watching, sir, because China uh, has been using some pretty aggressive rhetoric against the United States, anticipating her visit. She's officially there now. How do you expect China to respond? I expect them to do no more than just uh, rattle their sabers, and they're doing it. Of course, they're doing it with live fire in some places for practice. They want uh, the whole world to know that uh, they're uh, almost number one to the United States. Uh, obviously, they aren't number one, but they're trying to be number one. And I compliment Pelosi uh, for stopping in Taiwan, and I also uh, say to China or any other country, you can't tell Americans, members of Congress, where we can travel or not travel as long as we're welcome wherever we want to go. And she's surely welcome in Taiwan, and I'm sure glad that she went. Are you surprised at the White House messaging on all this, not all outright condemning China for their rhetoric? Uh, I think that there's many cases where our president should be condemning uh, ch uh, China for a lot of things, but I keep going back to some of my investigations about Hunter Biden. Does China hold something over this administration because of the Hunter Biden relationship with a lot of business people in China and what they have to do with the Communist Party and with the Chinese military? As, as a sitting member of Congress, a sitting senator, where do you find yourself when you ask that question based on the resources at hand? Well, I investigate the wrongdoing. I expose the wrongdoing. And uh, you have to turn it over to the Justice Department to uh, prosecute. We don't prosecute. But I have a constitutional responsibility of oversight. And if I see something wrong in a Republican administration or a Democrat administration, I hope to point it out. And I wish I could answer your question that there is some sort of uh, uh, blackmail involved here. But I uh, don't have enough evidence to say that. But I think I raise a legitimate question. Well, certainly, if that is the case, the American people would have big concerns about that uh, and want to know what Congress is doing about it. Uh, meantime, I can't wait to ask you about the Senate moving forward with this Manchin-Schumer bill. Uh, more tax and spend in the middle of a recession? You have to ask yourself that. And will it even lower inflation, sir? Have you had a chance to dig into this? Yes, I dug into it, and this is what I, I've drawn big conclusions, not specific ones yet. But when uh, we have uh, uh, the National Association of Manufacturers saying now's not the time to increase uh, taxes on business, uh, 200,000 people are going to be unemployed. Uh, I want to tell President Biden we're in a recession, two quarters of uh, economic decline is a, is a recession, and you shouldn't be raising taxes and increasing spending when we're in a recession. You should focus all of your attention on fighting the recession and getting inflation down. And inflation is the number one thing I hear from constituents in Iowa as I tour the 99 counties every year for a Q&A. I hear inflation, uh, cost of living, 
cost of gasoline, the border not being secured, and uh, crime rise. Well, you used to be able to depend on your colleague, uh, Senator Manchin, for getting in the way of, of spending like this, but he's hugely supportive of this. He's thrown his full support behind it, and he even appeared on Fox News just a, a short time ago with my colleague, Harris Faulkner, and continued defend, to defend his change of heart on this. Listen. The bottom line is how in the world can you be raising taxes when all we're saying is the wealthiest co uh, corporations in America, 55 of them pay zero to help this great country. Why can't the greatest uh, billion dollars of, of revenue a year, are, why can't they pay at least 15 percent for this great country? Are, so I'm paraphrasing, but his defense of this, he says that everybody's getting this wrong. Yeah, you know, the, the Joint Tax Committee, uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, everybody who's looked at this, he's saying this does not raise taxes on all Americans like Republicans are making it out to be, that this is just on those corporations with income over a billion dollars. They want to tax them more, and I'm paraphrasing, but it sounds like Joe Manchin's making the case he wants to make them pay their fair share. How do you respond to his defense of this? It's pretty darn easy to respond to it. First of all, I've already responded to it saying we're in a recession. You shouldn't be raising taxes. Uh, secondly, you shouldn't be increasing unemployment. And it does raise taxes and it does affect the average working a person because uh, it takes capital to create jobs. Uh, and, uh, and when you take uh, uh, taxes out of uh, employers, it's going to cut back on the wages that they can pay their workers. So uh, maybe it's indirectly, but the working men and women in these companies are going to pay a, share, a fair share of that uh, through less income. I, we can real quickly, I'll finish with this. We can put up the vulnerable Democrats who have been asked if they support this bill. They have not publicly said they support it. An obvious one outstanding person in all of this is your colleague in the Senate, Kristen Sinema, and where she stands. Do you have any idea or any word on that, Senator? I do not. She doesn't talk to the press very much. Uh, she talks to a lot of us members. I have good conversations with her. Uh, she's just not been willing to say, but she is very, very thorough. She studies these bills. Uh, she and her staff are working on it. And I think she's going to make up her mind, and I hope that mind is the right mind when she's been against tax increases, uh, and particularly now, and particularly after uh, we worked hard to get the chip bill passed uh, to bring jobs back from China. Uh, why would you want to increase taxes now uh, and uh, eliminate jobs to the tune of 200,000 in manufacturing in the United States when we just passed a bill a week ago to bring jobs back from China? Yeah. Senator, uh, I think we covered a lot there. Appreciate you coming on. Hope to continue the conversation with you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you.